So the full Oculus Quest 2 specs are in. Facebook Connect is going on right now. I'm going to compare the Quest 2 with the Quest 1 and the Rift and also the current best-in-class consumer headset for PC VR features coming now. Hello and welcome to the VR Cauldron. Today is a huge day for VR. Facebook Connect was this evening and we got loads of news about the Oculus Quest 2. We'd already had the leaks and some info from those leaked videos a few days ago, but now we have a whole lot more. Before I begin the info bomb comparisons with the Quest 1, if you're here right now, you love talking about VR. I'm always on the lookout for VR buddies to talk about my favourite hobby with. So if you want to join the conversation, hit that subscribe and bell button. Have a look at my comments sections if you you want I always reply unless you're just here for sex sorry got a wife <laughs> so in we go I've pulled the info here from reviews that are popping up now as well as the Facebook connect event and a few of the bigger VR youtubers have already had one for weeks one day so some new info from the event the device has a fitness tracker built in called Oculus Move, which is nice news for people like me who use VR for exercise. Sad news for the fitness tracker YUV, unless they've had something to do with it. It obviously comes with the elastic strap, which was there to save money, but there'll be optional accessories like a fit pack, which relates to how it, the Quest fits rather than fitness. The pack contains a pair of light blockers that look like lens spacers, but they kind of block the light by the nose, and two alternate facial interfaces for different face shapes. There's also an Elite strap as well as the Elite strap with a battery on it called the Elite battery strap which looks good and it's probably going to help as a counterweight too. The Quest 2 still has two to three hours of battery life so that strap will definitely come in handy. The controllers have a dedicated thumb rest now that's capacitative, 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 meaning the controllers know when you put your thumb there. The batteries now last four times as long and the battery door no longer opens in use. I do hope that the batteries stay in place too though so we don't get those annoying disconnections you get when swinging the controllers in games like thrill of the fight with the match oh, okay. ending in Woo. the first round it has the same lenses as in the previous quest which were amazing so that's absolutely fine and it's now smaller and lighter which is great news other cool things coming include the Infinite Office, which will basically be the ability to use the Quest 2 with the pass-through cameras to make your own office with huge augmented AR screens and a keyboard. That's right, Oculus have partnered with Logitech to bring your keyboard into VR so you can actually type properly. Apparently that'll be coming as an experimental release in the winter and it looks pretty cool. And now onto the specs and info that I previously predicted. So as we knew already, the Quest 2 has a Qualcomm Snapdragon XR2 beast of a processor with 6 gigs of RAM. I predicted a 255 as I couldn't see an XR2 being in a cheaper device. I'm happy I was wrong. There are 50% more pixels and the resolution is 1832 by 1920 per eye compared to the Quest 1's 1440 by 1600 per eye. I thought the resolution would be the same but with an LCD panel which would give a 50% sharper image. But the Quest 2 both increases the actual pixel count by 50% and uses a single LCD panel which I did predict so the image is going to be Incidentally, my second resolution guess was half right. I did think that it would be 1920p, but I got the width slightly wrong. This still puts the resolution very close to the HP Reverb G2 and way over the Valve Index, which is pretty much considered the best headset out right now. It will run at 90Hz, though the old games currently still run at 72. 90Hz will be unlocked soon, but right now it still does PC VR at 72Hz as well. I'm sure that's going to change soon. The current best in class for refresh rate is the Valve Index, but 90Hz is very nice when compared to the previous from Oculus. Apparently the FOV is about the same, but it might be a little larger. I predicted that it would be a bit larger because it looked like the screen would be closer to your eyes, but as I said before, Oculus don't tell us about FOV because they do depend on the user, so we'll keep an eye on that. Two eyes. As for the sound, it's still coming through the headband as we know, as we already knew, and is about as good as it was before. As I predicted way back when the images of the Quest leaked, yep, that's my post, we do get manual IPD adjustment using three preset settings that are accessed by moving the lenses themselves. But let's make sure we keep the built-in IPD adjustment. Got it. 
but keep the built-in IPD adjustment, of course. We can keep the built-in IPD adjustment? It's never been done before with a single panel. This is fantastic news for a lot of people who were worried they'd be going down the Rift S route of counting out 50% of users by not having adjustment. Now they're doing that by forcing Facebook accounts. Yikes! So since it is a single panel, they're using the hybrid method, as predicted, that moves the images on the panels digitally since you can't just move the lenses and keep the images in the same place. Oh, and the IPD settings are 58, 63 and 68 millimeters, so quite a good range. There's no link cable in the box and the charging cable is now a bit small, so you won't be using it as a makeshift link cable either. Get the tower, that tower, that tower. The price is exactly the same as the leaks, i.e. $299 for a 64 gig version and $399 for a 256. That's the same in dollars and pounds. Grr! But it's bloody amazing when you think about it. And yes, both headsets will have exactly the same specs, so you don't have to worry about getting some lesser model for $299. You only need the 256 gig if you want to load it up with everything. So when's it coming? Well, it's on pre-order now. I'll shove a link below. It's not an affiliate link as Oculus have no idea who I am. But if you haven't had a look yet, feel free to click on that and you can have a look at the other accessories too. The headsets will be shipping on October the 13th and I cannot wait. As soon as I have it, I'll be sure to do some kind of proper hands-on review and comparison. So, an amazing mobile VR headset with very good PC VR abilities for only $299 or pounds. I do feel sorry for the other headset manufacturers right now because it's going to be hard to compete with those numbers. I also feel sorry for the Rift S because as with the Quest 1, it is going bye-bye. In fact, all Oculus headsets going forward will be mobile slash PC hybrid headsets. I also feel sorry for the Reverb G2, a headset that looked very, very good with amazing visuals, but this is doing pretty much everything that does and more at half the price. I suppose the Reverb still has the non-Facebook login going for it and it does have nice earphones and over a long period of time it is going to be more comfortable as well. So how about you guys? Have you pre-ordered it or have all these specs still not managed to convince you to get a Facebook account? I know some of you are going to reluctantly get one and never use it, so leave your comments down below. I actually love replying to them just because I love talking about VR. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And if you want to stick around, don't forget to subscribe. So I've been Al. Thanks for watching the VR Cauldron. Take care of yourselves and I hope to see you next time. See ya. Upside down.